you. Newton was born in 1643 at Woodstock Manor in Woodstock by Colsterworth in the county of Lincolnshire. Fun fact! According to the Julian calendar, which was the US calendar at the time of his birth, he was born in 1642. His father, whose name was also Isaac Newton, had died three months before his birth, thus leaving his mother named Hannah Isgaff behind as a widow. When Newton was three years old, his mother remarried and went to live with her new husband, Reverend Barnabas Smith, and Newton was left in care of his maternal grandmother, Marjorie Asgarth. Newton quite disliked his stepfather and maintained enmity towards his mother for marrying him. This goes so far that when he later was 19 years old, he committed a list of sins, one of which was threatening his father and mother to burn them and their house down. Luckily, he didn't actually do it. At the age of about 12, he was educated at the King's School in Grantham, which taught him Latin, Ancient Greek and probably significant foundations of mathematics. In October 1659, he was removed from school again by his mother, as he had to return to Woodstock by Colsterworth. His mother then widowed a second time and attempted to make Newton a farmer. He hated the occupation. Thankfully, Henry Stokes, master at King's School, persuaded his mother to send Newton back to school. Motivated partly by a desire for revenge against the schoolyard bully, he became the top-ranked student. Early Adulthood In June 1661, he was admitted to Trinity College in Cambridge, on recommendations of his uncle, Reverend William Ayscoff. There he mainly studied Aristotle's teachings, but he complemented them with those of modern philosophers and astronomers, for example Galileo Galilei. That's also the time when he wrote down his Questiones Quedam Philosophicae, a set of philosophical questions that he found interesting, which he then answered using the scientific method. He also discovered the generalized binomial theorem, which we sadly cannot explain to you because we are not educated enough. He also began to work on something new, which is today known as calculus. Then, in 1665, the university was temporarily closed due to the Great Plague and Newton had to continue his studies on his own at his home. During this time, he sat below an apple tree in his garden and further developed his theories of calculus, optics and, when one day an apple fell from the tree onto his head, the law of gravitation. Two years later, he was allowed to go back to school. Other works. There was a dispute between Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz and Newton over who had developed calculus first. Some people said that Newton had developed it first, and the Royal Society said Leibniz's work was a fraud. In the field of optics, he made a great discovery with prisms. He found out that a ray of white light entering a prism is divided into the different colors of the color spectrum. The different colors are then refracted by different angles, thus creating that rainbow you can see there. You can then take a second prism and a lens to put the colored light rays back into one white ray. Newton also established Newton's theory of color, which says that color is the result of objects interacting with already colored light, rather than objects generating the color themselves. As you already know, he also worked a lot on his theory of gravity but we are sure the other groups will tell you about that. Death On March the 20th, 1727, Newton died peacefully in his sleep, probably of mercury poisoning from his alchemical studies. He was buried in Westminster Abbey in London, which is one of the most important churches of Britain. Most British monarchs had had their coronation and burial in that church, and not only was it a great honor to be buried there, he was also given a ceremonial burial, and there were a lot of important people, nobles, scientists and philosophers, even kings and queens. And that's the story of the genius behind the theories. <laughs>